Today is, today, today is October 8th, 2020. The title of today's lesson is Protein Synthesis, and it is the third day of our fifth unit, all about the central dogma of biology, which is a concept we will introduce today. At this point, you should be taking out your notes and you should be getting ready to write down some important concepts, some new words that we'll introduce today, as well as to do some practice problems that we'll walk through. The objective of today's le lesson, biologists will be able to explain the steps involved in making new proteins from amino acids. So we'll talk in the beginning stages about that. The essential question, how is an organism's ability to make proteins determined by its genetic code? So there's linkage there between genes and proteins, between DNA and proteins. There's a linkage, we've talked about the linkage before, but we will go in further de into further detail about it in today's lesson. So at this point, you should have your notes down or have your notes out. Hopefully you've written down the title of the lesson, the date, and we are going to go ahead and jump into it. We'll do that later if we have time. So do not send me to this question on remind. Don't send it on remind. Send it to the chat. Send your answer to the chat. The question, is which statement best justifies why DNA replication is an essential process in the human body? Is the answer A, it is necessary for photosynthesis, B, it is necessary for mitosis and meiosis, C, it is necessary for protein synthesis, or D, it is necessary for cellular respiration? So send your answers to the chat. Tell me what you think it is. A, B, C, or D. I've got one answer from Jaden. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Who else has got some, some ideas about what the answer should be here? Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Makaira. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of bees, big bees rolling in. All right. The answer is indeed B. We must replicate DNA before we can undergo M phase, which is either mitosis or meiosis. So we've got to make a copy of the DNA before the cell can divide, before the cell can reproduce. So all of you who correctly answered B, excellent job. I appreciate your participation. Let's keep that same energy and engagement going forward for the rest of this lesson. So this is the concept of the central dogma of biology. It's explained here in this general basic flow chart. Does anybody have any ideas about what a dogma is? What does the word dogma mean? Any ideas about what the word dogma means? Okay. It is a tough word, it's not one that you hear often, but a dogma is essentially a principle or a concept that is not up for debate. It's a, it's a principle that is supported by so much evidence that we wouldn't really accept debates over it. It wouldn't make sense to, to, to question the validity of this concept. And so it's very, very important. In biology, the central dogma describes the process by which proteins are made. We go from DNA to mRNA to amino acids to proteins, and those proteins ultimately give an organism or a cell its traits. The proteins determine what the cell does and they ultimately determine what the organism is able to do and what the organism look like, looks like. So genes, the DNA, code for the proteins we make. This is the central dogma of biology. Your genes, your DNA, are the instructions to make proteins. Please write that down. The central dogma of biology is that genes code for the proteins we make. 
they are the instructions. Okay. Additionally, going from DNA to mRNA, which is a specific type of RNA that we will introduce today, that process is called transcription. And it's the first step of this protein synthesis process. So to go from DNA to mRNA is transcription. And then to go from mRNA to amino acids is translation, translation. Okay. So my question for you then, what is a cell's primary purpose? What is the primary purpose of a cell? What are all cells hoping to do? To provide structures to the body. Okay, they need to provide structure. Thank you, Jaden. And and what which of our four biological compounds? You've got carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Which of the four provides the structure to the body and also does a wide variety of other things? Nucleic acids. That was really quiet. I heard someone say something. Joseph, can you say it a little louder? Nucleic acids. Okay, nucleic acids give us the instruction to make these things, but what is actually required to carry out all the different functions of the cell? Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm going to give the answer, but both Jaden and Joseph gave really good, um, important contributions to the answer. So the primary purpose of any cell is to make proteins, because proteins are essential to life. They carry out a wide variety of functions. So you should definitely write down this answer. This is really what this central dogma is all about. How do we go from DNA to proteins? We need to be able to make specific proteins. Okay, so we've talked about several of these types of proteins in the past. Perhaps you remember antibodies, enzymes, you should definitely remember enzymes, insulin, hemoglobin, and hormones. But do you all remember what these proteins do? What are their functions? What does an antibody do? What is the role of an antibody? An antibody is a protein, but what is it what is it hoping to or what does it do for us? What do antibodies do for us? Any ideas? It's really a hot button topic right now because of COVID-19.
Okay. Thank you for at least acknowledging me, Jaden. Anybody else have it? No, you're all good. Thanks, Jaden. I appreciate you. Anybody else have any ideas before I reveal the answer? Let's get some more participation here from folks not named Jaden and Joseph and uh, Makairan and Nick. Okay. Uh, so antibodies are needed to aid our body's immune response in order to fight off viruses and bacteria. So an antibody is the way that our bodies can recognize these bacteria and, and recognize them as invaders and try to ward them off. So our body produces these antibodies in response to bacteria that we have come in contact with. So when you get a cold, it's caused by a specific virus, your body will produce antibodies that will be able to recognize that virus in the future so that you won't get that same cold again. Okay, so antibodies are really, really important. Does anybody, all of you hopefully should know what an enzyme does. What do enzymes do? Thank you, thank you, Jaden. I appreciate you having that answer ready to go. Reaction. Yes, good. So enzymes speed up chemical reactions. That is their primary function. We have a whole bunch of enzymes in our body, and we have a whole bunch of enzymes that come up in this unit. So you're going to see what is the suffix that you'll see when we're talking about enzymes. Enzymes typically end in what letters? ASE. ASE. Excellent. Jaden is on fire today. Somebody else just joined us. Let me see who it is. Maybe not. I thought I saw somebody else join. Jessica. All right. What about insulin? What does insulin do? Does anybody remember that one? We've heard of insulin because perhaps you've heard uh, or you have a family member or maybe you yourself. Good, so insulin is needed to break down glucose. Insulin signals to our body, hey, you've, we've got a lot of sugar in here. We've got a lot of glucose. It's time to start breaking some of it down. Otherwise, if you don't break it down, then it gets stored as glycogen, which is not good for your body. Okay, so insulin is an essential hormone that is needed to, to signal your body to break down glucose. What about hemoglobin? Does any know, anyone know what hemoglobin is? Oxygen. Okay, excellent. Hemoglobin is needed to carry oxygen in our red blood cells. So every red blood cell has four hemoglobins and each of those hemoglobins can carry oxygen with it. This is obviously extremely important because if some, of, some parts of your body are deprived of oxygen, even for short periods of time, it can be deadly. For example, the muscles in your heart, if they are deprived of oxygen because of some type of injury or because of some chemical imbalance or because your body is not producing hemoglobin, you can have a heart attack. If your brain is not getting oxygen, well, then it's simply not going to be able to function properly either. It could lead to a number of different conditions. So hemoglobin is super important. What about hormones? Do we remember what hormones do? Okay, so hormones are involved in reproductive health, yes, and reproductive uh, development, aka leading to sex. But more generally, does anyone know what hormones do? Because they, hormone is a very, very broad category of proteins. Okay, they do regulate in some way. Good job, Jessica. So they serve as the messengers between cells in your body. So you've got specific cells in your brain. There's a region in your brain called the pituitary gland that produces many different types of proteins. Some of those proteins are destined to travel to your reproductive system, just like Jaden alluded to. 
So they tell your reproductive system, this person is about 13, 14, 15 years old. It's time for them to start undergoing puberty. And puberty results in secondary sex characteristics, like your voice getting deeper in some cases, your body produces more hair, you grow more, more rapidly. Perhaps if you are a person who's born female, your hips start to get a little bit wider. If you're a person who's born male, your shoulders get a bit broader. All right, so that's one type of hormone, but there are many other types of hormones as well. Perhaps you've heard of the hormone adrenaline. So when your body is faced with a threat, this hormone is produced in your, in your adrenal glands, which are on top of your kidneys, and it triggers your body into being able to respond quickly to things, your fight or flight response. There are hormones like melanin or melatonin, I'm sorry, that are used to trigger your body that it's time to go to sleep. Okay, so hormones do a wide variety of things, and we can really, in general, just say that they are involved in cell communication. So good job, good job on those. All right, do you all remember any differences between DNA and RNA? Can someone give me a, a single difference between these two? DNA is double helix. Excellent, Kyrie. DNA is a double helix versus RNA, which is a single helix. We can see that here. What else? Anybody else have another difference between DNA and RNA for us? Okay, good. Now I got thymine. Well, have you said they don't have thymine? Good. RNA does not have thymine, right? So we can see DNA has this thymine uh, nitrogen base, which is the T. But uh, RNA has uracil. It doesn't have thymine. It has the U. I don't know if and anybody. We also, uh, they're not double stranded. Okay, we we got that one already. But yeah, DNA is double stranded. RNA is not. It just has a single strand. And then Jaden also just told us that RNA has the ribose sugar. That's why it's ribonucleic acid. DNA has deoxyribose sugar. That's why it's deoxyribonucleic acid. So that's another difference. So you guys did, did well there. You got most of these differences. We heard from Kyrie, DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. We heard from Jaden. DNA has deoxyribose sugar, RNA has ribose sugar. We also heard from Kyrie, DNA has the nitrogen bases ATCG and RNA has AUCG. So I'm gonna leave this up because I know some of you are new to the class and you may wanna write down this chart. This is really important, the differences between DNA and RNA. And even if you are not new to the course but you don't remember these differences, it could be a good mental reminder to write it down for a second time. And we're introducing a new difference here. So DNA, there's only one type of DNA, it's just DNA. But RNA could have, it could be either mRNA, rRNA, or tRNA. And we're gonna talk about those, those types on the next slide. So I'm leaving this up for a while in hopes that those of you who don't know about these differences will write down this chart.
All right. DNA versus RNA. So these are the types of RNA. We've got mRNA, which carries the DNA message, rRNA, which makes up the ribosome, and tRNA, which links amino acids together. So we're going to hear about all three of these types. Primarily, you'll hear about mRNA and tRNA. rRNA is important because it makes up the ribosome, literally ribosomes are made up of rRNA, but um, we won't hear too much about that one. All right, so you should write down those different types and what they do. mRNA carries the DNA message. rRNA makes up the ribosome. tRNA links amino acids together. Messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA. Okay, so we're going to watch this video. Here is a cell, the basic unit of all living tissue. In most human cells, there is a structure called the nucleus. The nucleus contains the genome. In humans, the genome is split between 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA, tightly packaged around proteins called histones. Within the DNA are sections called genes. These genes contain the instructions for making proteins. When a gene is switched on, an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to the start of the gene. It moves along the DNA, making a strand of messenger RNA out of free bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the free bases are added to the messenger RNA. This process is called transcription. Before the messenger RNA can be used as a template for the production of proteins, it needs to be processed. This involves removing and adding sections of RNA. The messenger RNA then moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Protein factories in the cytoplasm, called ribosomes, bind to the messenger RNA. The ribosome reads the code in the messenger RNA to produce a chain made up of amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acid. Transfer RNA molecules carry the amino acids to the ribosome. The messenger RNA is read three bases at a time. As each triplet is read, 
a transfer RNA delivers the corresponding amino acid. This is added to a growing chain of amino acids. Once the last amino acid has been added, the chain folds into a complex 3D shape to form the protein. Okay. So that was a really thorough overview of this process of protein synthesis. We're going to talk about the second half of it tomorrow, but the first half of it is called transcription. And it is during this process of transcription when the DNA is converted into mRNA. We call that, we say it's transcribed. So you should be writing, you should be writing some things down on this slide. The goal of transcription is to convert DNA into mRNA, messenger RNA. Transcription occurs in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells, so those are plant and animal cells, or it occurs in the cytoplasm of prokaryotic cells like bacteria. So transcription happens first. Transcription happens first. We can see in this animation, this process happening. We're going to have to wait for it to restart. But here in this process, okay, so here we have an enzyme, and this enzyme is making mRNA, an mRNA code out of DNA. This is the process of transcription. We're transcribing the DNA to mRNA. We can see how this new chain of mRNA is coming out of this enzyme. And eventually the enzyme will reach the end of the gene. It will release the RNA. And now the RNA is going to travel outside of the nucleus where it can move on to the next step. So this first step is DNA to RNA, and it's called transcription. Here are the steps of transcription. First, just like yesterday when we talked about DNA replication, the DNA needs to be unzipped. You can't do much with DNA that is tightly wound up in its natural double helix state. We need to unzip it. We need to break those hydrogen bonds. And once that happens, the enzyme RNA polymerase can copy the DNA, I'm not copy the DNA, can transcribe the DNA to mRNA. Lastly, the mRNA, uh -oh. lastly, the mRNA leaves the cell, leaves the nucleus, not the cell, it leaves the nucleus and travels to the cytoplasm where the next step will occur. We'll talk about the next step tomorrow. So this is the first step of transcription. Okay. 
So transcription is like using the same language, but just putting it in a slightly different format. So for example, some of the text messages that you all may have sent in the past or continue to send, use abbreviations, you use text language. It's still English, but it is written in a slightly different format. So it needs to be transcribed into more standard English to be understood by some people. So transcription is the same language, it's just written in a slightly different format. We're going from the ATCG of DNA to the AUCG of RNA. Same language, they both include nitrogen bases, they're both written in nitrogen bases. But there's a slightly different format because DNA has a T, RNA has a U. All right, so let's practice with some of this transcription. Share my screen over here. Okay, make a chart here. Over here, I'm going to put my DNA. Over here, I'm going to put my RNA. And in the middle, I'm going to say what it's transcribed. All right, so I'm going to put arrows here. All right, so can someone remind me, what are the four letters of DNA? What are the four nitrogen bases of DNA? Isn't T one of them? Okay, T, what else? Good job. G. G. Actually, I'm gonna put this in a different color. G, what else? A. Yep, we got A. And then one more. N? No. Wait. Is it in? Nope, no U's in DNA. I said N. Nope, no N. C. C. <laughs> they just spare me, bro. Okay. So we talked yesterday about some of the nitrogen bases being complementary to one another. Actually, I want to do this differently. We know that A and T are complementary to one another and C and G are complementary to one another. But RNA does not have T's. But in this first case, T is going to be transcribed to A, just like it would be in DNA. You know, T and A are complementary. So if I have a T, it's going to go to A. What's gonna happen with my, with my G? What does that get transcribed to? Still here. C. <laughs> Now this one's going to be a little trickier for some of you. What does the A get transcribed to? Before you answer, A U. Thank you. Good. There is no T. There is no T in RNA. There is no T in RNA. And then lastly, what does my C get transcribed to? A G. A G. Good. Okay. So please write down what you're seeing here. If you're a little confused, this is something that you should definitely write down. Please write that down if you 
don't yet know what's going on here. Now we want to practice with some transcription. So A T A C G T. That's what I've got. I've got A T A C. Oops, that's not a C. C G. What was my last one? C G T. So based on the chart that we've already drawn on the left slot on the left side over here, what does A get transcribed to? If I've got an A, what does it get transcribed to? If this is my DNA. This is my line of DNA. What does this A get transcribed to for mRNA? Hello. You. Thank you. And what about T? What does T get transcribed to? A. A. And then we've got another A, so what's next? U. U. Then I've got C. What, what does that get transcribed Yep, that's G. What about G? A. Mm, G does not go to A. Oh, wait. C. C, yes, good. And then yeah. lastly, what's that? A. Yes, good. All right, so this is really important. This is important to understand. We're gonna keep practicing with it. What's the next, what's the next, uh, let's see, A-C-G-G-A. A-C-G-G-A. All right, go line here. So I've got A-C-G-G-A, which should my, transcribed RNA B. T. Nope, no T's. Remember, no T's in RNA. Oh, you said RNA. Oh. You. You, thank you. Then what? G. G. C. 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 You. Excellent. Good. So let's check and make sure. We should have U, G, C, A, U, G, C, C, U. U-A-U-G-C-A-U-G-C-C-U. That's correct. Bye, boo, boo Good job. All right. Somebody else joined us. Sorry, Jessica, I wasn't looking at your messages. Um, all right. So we're going back to this slide. We can tell that it's correct. Now, this next one, I want you all to do on your own and send it to the chat. Send me what you think in the chat, what you think it should be. But you should be writing it down. So write it down in your notes and then give me what you think the order should be in the chat.
AGCs. Okay, let me see. AGCCU should be the first five. AGCCU. Good. A U G G U C U G G U C. Excellent. Nick, McKyron, Alyssa, you guys are all correct. Good job. Now, uh, I will say, Nick and McKyron, we only use capital letters. You know, it's not a big deal right now, but we do only use capital letters for, for this process. Um, so, when you all on your test, if you have to type in something, please make sure that you're using capital letters. But you were all correct. The three of you were correct. So, good job. Okay. So, We've got an opportunity to practice this transcription process with a brief activity on Canvas today. Um, you should be able to do both the exit ticket and this transcription practice activity in the next 20 minutes before class is over. So go ahead and start working on that now. I will be here on mute if you need any help with these concepts or if you need any help with uh, the gizmos, getting into the gizmos.
Okay, folks, it's 1.20, so you all are good to go. I appreciate your participation today. If you need anything between now and tomorrow, please don't hesitate to let me know. We only have one more day this week. So finish strong, and I hope you all have a good Thursday evening, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.